I am a very simple person, but I say only that our produce seafood is at the cost of hard work in sunny, rainy and stormy conditions until sweat flows from the head to feet. The world over, we see that fisheries are on the brink of collapse and aquaculture is put forward as a promising solution. Seafood consumption in Europe is increasingly supplemented by aquaculture products from Asia. But does this trade promote sustainable patterns of consumption and production? And who defines what is sustainable by what indicators or measures? These questions are at the center of the European Union-funded research project Sustaining Ethical Aquaculture Trade, or SEAT. Well, ultimately, we're trying to come up with some kind of ethical aquaculture food index. Something that can give us an indication of when uh, this trade of aquaculture products between Europe and Asia uh, is what we might call e ethical or sustainable. The SEAT project has focused on the trade of four major commodity species. Shrimp, prawns, tilapia and pangasius from four Asian countries, Bangladesh, China, Thailand and Vietnam. The Ethical Aquaculture Food Index is made to help those with a stake in the trade, such as European supermarket chains, measure the changing and diverse sustainability issues of the trade. And in doing so, we're really trying to construct this index from both a European perspective, from the perspective of what Europeans want from their seafood products and expect from the industry, and on the other hand, construct it according to what Asian producers expect from the industry and what they need, what their aspirations are for this industry. Some of the most stinging controversy has been attached to the trade of shrimp and prawns from Bangladesh to Europe. Aquaculture has become an increasingly important pillar of development in Bangladesh. The frozen fish and shrimp sector is the third largest foreign currency earner in Bangladesh. In 2011, Bangladesh earned over 600 million US dollars from this sector. However, Bangladeshi shrimp and prawns have a checkered history. Temporary bans have been put in place by European authorities at times, and non-governmental organizations like the Swedish Society for Nature Conservation have called for a complete boycott of these products, arguing that the economic development offered by aquaculture comes at significant environmental and social cost. But this is far from being the final word. We see that different certifiers have different perspectives on the sustainability and safety of Bangladeshi aquaculture. While some argue Bangladeshi shrimp and prawns are produced with low energy feed and chemical inputs and are sustainable, others argue the opposite. This creates a very confusing picture for consumers Whose sustainability measures should we trust? Amongst these many competing voices, one voice is rarely heard, that of Bangladeshi producers. The SEAT project wants to present a balanced scientific study into the sustainability of the Bangladeshi aquaculture industry, which takes into account Bangladeshi people's own daily reality and what they think represents a sustainable and ethical industry. It goes beyond the rhetoric by arguing from an evidence base founded in extensive surveys and scientific studies. What we're trying to do here is, is rather, in a bottom-up way, build these measures, build these indicators that are relevant to the producers themselves, to the people in the industry, to the people in the community. Somehow we want to have a dialogue between Asia and Europe, right?
To make the producer's voice heard, SIAD project researchers from the University of Bergen traveled to Kalna, in the heart of Bangladesh shrimp and prawn country, to run a workshop in partnership with the Bangladesh Agricultural University. And we invited different levels of stakeholders in the Belochan of seafood in Bangladesh. And almost all of them attended the workshop and different types of people were there. They interacted very well and particularly the, with the ethical issues. Whether they be a farmer, whether they be a decision maker, uh, really, whoever they may be, as soon as you get them around the table and you ask them about uh, some kind of philosophical matters or the future of the industry, something like this, the, the, the debate that ensues, the banter, the arguments, the, is, is phenomenal. One important finding of the workshop was that discussions on ethical and sustainable aquaculture engaged participants at all levels. Each had their own ideas of sustainability within a Bangladeshi context. The workshop opened with a film on the European perspective, outlining 10 common attributes looked for in seafood products by European consumers. For most participants, this film offered a unique view into a very different reality, with different ways of preparing seafood. <laughs> I was interested to see that European eating habits are changing, that they are going out to restaurants and eating less at home. It was useful to see, but it does not take into account the current situation in Bangladesh. If we could develop socially and economically, some of these considerations may be more realistic. Though the Bangladesh aquaculture value chain has had its ups and downs, many Bangladeshis argue it has brought economic development to a country that is in very dire need of it. For the Bangladeshi people, a sustainable industry is one that promotes the economic and social development that comes from sustained trade. This trade is a force for change, which has seen the industry improve over the past 30 years. The shrimp and prawn value chain begins with the small fry, with some criticism leveled on the Bangladeshi industry for harvesting wild fry from rivers and estuaries harming wild stocks. However, since a ban on this practice in 2000, Wild fry catching is decreasing, with only 20% of shrimp now grown from wild fry. An increasing proportion are grown in a closed and sustainable system. Fry hatched in a hatchery before being transported to nursery ponds and fed a high-protein diet. From the nursery, they are sent to grow-out farms, which in Bangladesh are relatively extensive, with a low stocking density and without the pumps and machinery of more intensive operations. Farmers fertilize the ponds to grow plankton and algae for the shrimps and prawns to eat, seen by the bright-colored algae in the ponds. They also add some supplementary feed in the initial stages of growth, harvested from neighboring crops. The majority of prawn farms and an increasing number of shrimp farms practice polyculture. The ponds are stocked with many other species besides shrimp and prawns for local consumption, alongside rice crops, fruit trees and vegetable gardens on the dikes, providing a mixed diet for communities. In Bangladesh, the majority of feed is locally sourced and plant-based because of the high cost of feed produced from ground-up trash fish. 
though some of such feed is produced locally in Bangladesh. The preferred feed is the local freshwater apple snail, together with other homemade feeds like boiled rice and papaya or cheek pea. As for any animal production, disease can be a problem and demands medical treatment. To this end, Bangladesh aquaculture has in the past been criticized for medicating their prawns with antibiotics, with concerns over food safety. In response, the use of antibiotics is reducing, and all products that arrive on European shelves are subject to rigorous testing in cooperation with European agencies, so consumers can have faith that what they consume is safe. In the processing plants, shrimps and prawns are processed into the products that we see on European supermarket shelves and frozen for export. The processing factories have been at the center of controversy, with non-governmental organizations highlighting cases of worker exploitation, gender discrimination and child labor. In Bangladesh, uh, you can say, uh, 20 years before, 30 years before, uh, we do not have enough idea regarding the uh, discrimination of gender. While these issues remain, the industry has been taking concrete steps to improve working conditions, with improvements recognized by European authorities. We, 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 uh, we have uh, labor rules in Bangladesh, and it is most comprehensive. Back in the workshop, participants realized that the growing niche of environmentally and socially aware consumers in Europe buying organic products, could offer new possibilities for Bangladeshi aquaculture. They saw Bangladesh having a competitive advantage for this sector, given many of their shrimps and prawns are already produced in low-density, family-owned farms practicing polyculture and using low inputs of energy, feed and chemicals. For participants, a strong system of standardization and traceability is needed to enforce the changes in practice necessary for Bangladeshi shrimp and prawns to conform to European organic standards. Particularly, they were happy to see that the European consumers wants to eat the seafood that is cultured in extensive system. The common view is really towards something which we might in the West call organic. Something where uh, it's very extensive, family owned, small, farms uh, run in a, in a, in a highly regularized, regulated sorry, and standardized way uh, to ensure high quality. In fact, uh, in the past, we do not have enough idea regarding or organic shrimps or organic food. Uh, we are producing most of the shrimps in, uh, in, in Bangladesh is organic but there is no certification system. Then we contacted Naturland in Germany and they visited Bangladesh with the cooperation of SIPPO in Switzerland. So uh, they gave us some ideas about the organic shrimps, how to produce, how to transport, how to carry to the factory, how to process in the processing plant, how to pack, how to keep, and how to export. The workshop revealed that despite coming from different realities, European consumers and Bangladeshi producers and communities share many basic ideas about a sustainable and ethical trade of aquaculture products. Bangladeshi aquaculture is moving towards something Europe considers organic and sustainable. But to do this, they will need to get a fair price. The SIAT project wanted to help the Bangladeshi people make their voices heard and send a message back to European consumers and decision makers. At the end of the workshop, the participants created a giant postcard on which everybody wrote their own message to Europe. If the product price does not increase, then this sector cannot be sustained because 
the labor cost and other costs are increasing. Economic and social development will improve. Our seafood quality is good, free of unwanted things and too much delicious. If your country imports our seafood, we will become economically self-sufficient.